I'm John Skinner, and this supplements my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. All right, I'm just going to give you a little preview of this video. Um, this is the most significant fishing trip I've made in a long time because I've learned a new tool, and uh, yeah, I'm going to have a lot to say about that. Uh, let's just watch this. Wow. Wow. Okay, so what is this lure? If you're a largemouth bass fisherman, uh, you probably recognize this. Zara Spook has been around a very long time. This happens to be a Hedden Super Spook Jr. Um, this is also very popular with snook and redfish anglers in the south. Uh, what I'm going to show is a larger version of this. Uh, the exact brand here, this is a Little Dock. Kind of hard to consider this little when you compare the size of the two. Um, but if you look at the full-size dock, yeah, that one's even bigger. This is the 9-inch version. Uh, this one is a 7. And I've also found um, a version of this made by Jigging World, and I like it a little better because it's slightly heavier and it casts a little bit farther. But all of these are really good plugs, and uh, I'll have links to all of these in the video description. Okay, I look at the rod action to put the action on the lure. Yep, the sweeps, and the idea is to, at the end of these sweeps, have a little slack on the line so the plug can move on its own. Um, here comes the plug coming in between those two rocks. You can see that wide, very wide side-to-side -side motion. Uh, you don't get that if you don't allow that little bit of slack in between the pulls. Um, it's just deadly. All right, if you're an experienced New England striper fisherman, you're probably wondering why am I putting this thing out here like it's some kind of a new lure. Uh, this is a very popular striper lure up in New England, not so much south of New England. Um, this came about because uh, Jerry Audette, who writes for a couple of regional fishing publications, uh, him and I exchanged email, and he just happened to say, hey, uh, I've got fish that are ignoring pencils, but just blowing up um, on these spook plugs, and if you've never tried them, uh, you really should give them a shot. Hey, you know what? I, I couldn't find them locally in my tackle stores. I've never seen anybody use one before. So I went online, I ordered a couple. <laughs> this is my first cast with it. I know I'm not supposed to pop it. I know it's not a pencil popper. This is just total inexperience on the, f on the first cast. I, I know what I'm trying, the action I'm trying to get. I'm going to settle it down by the end of this trip, but watch the results of this first cast. All right, now this was late September. I had blanketed this water for about 20 minutes with pencils, nothing. There was just not a lot of fish around. I had that one faint swirl. And despite my crap retrieve on that first cast, that fish still took the plug. I mean, it followed it. I timed it um, by looking at the video. 17 seconds from the time the fish first swirled the plug till the time it actually took it. Um, and this is something I've noticed about this plug. Now that I've fished it, subsequently for about a month after that maybe another seven or eight trips um, once they lock on this thing they rarely turn off and uh, although i've not until this trip used these for stripers the big spooks um, i have used the smaller versions for snook and redfish so yeah you're gonna see i'm gonna make adjustments within a couple of casts to get this right uh, what i found interesting was i talked to a tackle distributor who um, handles these plugs and said he ships them in bulk to New England, rarely to New York, New Jersey, or, or south of there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, from this trip and then, like I said, subsequent trips, um, it, it was hard for me to believe that, you know, I, I didn't see these plugs around. And um, I can tell you uh, it's unlikely I will ever be uh, without a couple of these in the bag. And at some point, I'll try these with inline single hooks. Um, I left the hook configuration exactly the way it was out of the package because I wasn't going to start modifying a plug that I wasn't even sure of in the first place. But um, yeah, well, this, this one's not hooked uh, deep at all. And I did crush the barbs a little bit so the hooks will come out easier. I 
this. He's okay. All right, this is my fourth cast with the plug, and you'll notice that I've already switched over to um, holding the rod level to the water. And, uh, yeah, I, I've got a much better retrieve. And really what that was about was, like I said, I've used them for snook before. Um, so I recalled that fishing and holding the rod level, but um, I didn't think that that was going to work out well with a 10-footer. It's a 10-foot surf rod. Um, as it worked out, yeah, it feels absolutely fine. And then once I made one cast level, uh, then that's the way I do it now. You see here, cast four, um, I've got another fish. And again, this was fishless. Um, there was, you know, no sign of life, nothing looking at the pencil, uh, nothing until I put this plug on. These are challenging conditions. This water is clear. Like I said, it's late September. It's warm. Um, obviously, it's very calm. These are the most challenging conditions, and usually when it's hardest to pull something with an artificial. So at this point of the trip, uh, I've made forecasts. I've got two fish. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited at this point. All right, this is the very next cast, so it's cast number five with this plug. All right, that's one of the very few times where I, I got a look and the fish didn't stay on it, but I, again, and this is, uh, let's see, five casts, three, three fish, two landed on five casts, and I, I'm a complete novice with this plug. Uh, Probably that fish didn't follow because the retrieve wasn't great. Uh, I'm going to improve on the retrieve. All right, so I made three more casts and didn't get hit. So I went back to the pencil, blanketed the place with the pencil, no interest, then went back to this plug again. Wow. Wow. All right, I, I dropped them, but, uh, you know, I'm realizing it, it made no difference because that's four that I've raised and three that I've had on uh, on an otherwise really dead evening. Um, I also hear these plugs are very popular up in the musky world. I'm not sure whether they started with the stripers or the muskies, but, um, yeah, the big muskies like them too. Okay, on subsequent trips, I've slowed the, the rod action down a little bit and have focused more on... Um, less frequent but more deliberate pulls to try to get that side-to-side -side action. Come on. Oh, oh, this is, this is freaking torture. I think he's still there. Oh. I think I got the retrieve down. <clears throat> All right, so that's something that I've just found amazing about this plug. Um, that fish followed the plug for 21 seconds. The first one was 17 seconds. That is such a long time for that fish to be following this artificial under these conditions and and just not letting it go and finally eating it so all right um like i said this was a really significant trip for me it's a, a new tool in the uh, toolbox and uh, i hope it will be for you too and if you like these videos uh, please subscribe